This pair of RM Williams isn't available at the moment. Their current lineup of lace-up boots are the Risden and the Rigger, uh, but they do bring back styles seasonally, and if they bring this back, put them on your buy list. G'day, welcome to Brutlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people. This is the King Scott lace-up boot by RM Williams. If you thought that RM Williams only made Chelsea boots, you should know that they have always made lace-up boots as part of their collection from at least the 1940s, uh, as can be seen from some old ads. More recently, they've sold the Rickaby, which I've reviewed up there, uh, and their current models are the Riga and the Risden. Now, frustratingly for reviewers uh, who want to show you boots that you can buy, they do swap models every now and then. For example, even though at the time of recording, the Rickaby is not available, uh, whether that's through lack of supply or delays in manufacture, or whether it's their seasonal strategy of bringing out models seasonally, I do expect it to come back. This Kingscott model hasn't been around for about two years, I think, uh, possibly a bit less. And I can't see that at some stage they won't bring it back because it's not quite the rugged rigor and Risden styles. This one is in soft yearling leather uh, in an uh, RM Williams color called Warwick, uh, a deep brick ochre like Australia's central desert. It's six inches high at the shaft, measured from the top of the heel block, has a rounded almond uh, shaped plain toe, has a combination of eyelets and speed hooks, and sits on a full length Vibram Commando uh, sole in brick red with an incorporated block heel. When it was advertised for sale, it was described as a lightweight, unisex, rugged style, uh, and from the models pictured wearing the boot, I think it was probably styled as a high-quality substitute for Doc Martens. Having said that, the very soft yearling leather is not the type to crease and patina heavily, and with the rounded almond toe shape, it's very possible to wear this with uh, less bother boy or emo girl fashions, and even wear it to an office under chinos or slacks, uh, add a dressy button-up shirt and put on a sports coat. An alternative is to go with the uh, potential sultry look. <laughs> go all black basically, black jeans, black leather jacket, and rock the color as a pop on the feet. And of course, denim is always good with boots, and this one is no exception. Uh, put it under a pair of denim jeans, a flannel shirt, and throw on a western style waxed trucker jacket, and you've got the whole western casuals going. Now, I'm gonna talk a bit about RM Williams. I do realize that for my subscribers, you'll have already heard me talk about the brand in my various RM Williams reviews. But I want this channel to be accessible to new viewers and more importantly, to new boot people. So um, if you've heard it all before, just skip to the next section about the construction. So RM Williams was founded in South Australia. That, that's a state, not just a geographical uh, region. It was founded in 1932 by Reginald Murray Williams. He was an itinerant bushman uh, who learned leather craft from another passing uh, horseman and so started to make saddles and then boots. He settled on a property in the northern suburbs of Adelaide, which is now a museum, by the way. Uh, it's, it's also a showroom for the company. In the 1960s, the company expanded into stockman's clothing as well as boots uh, and then expanded in the 1970s, opening stores all over Australia. In the late 1980s, RM sold the business and retired uh, as the company continued to expand, opening its first London store at the end of the decade. Since then, it has passed through several owners' hands, including corporates, uh, including stints with private equity firms and the global Louis Vuitton Moy Hennessy luxury goods conglomerate. In 2020, it was brought back into full Australian ownership when Andrew Forrest, a West Australian iron or mining billionaire took over. While RM Williams has always made their boots in Australia, many of the other products were made overseas, uh, and Forrest has made it his strategic plan to move all production back into Australia. Today, RM Williams have shops in most large cities around the world, 
and also sell through uh, retail stores elsewhere. I'll leave a link to their website below and wherever you are, you might be able to search for a store near you. So to the construction of these Kingscott boots. The leather is exceptional, so I'm going to start from the top. This is yearling leather, in this case, chrome tanned in New Zealand. It is a full grain leather uh, from a calf that's a year old and destined for the dinner table. <laughs> it has a very fine grain because of the age of the animal. It creases very finely and does not patina ruggedly. Uh, and also because of the age of the animal, the fibers are very fine and tightly packed. So um, strength per thickness is quite high. It is supple, but very durable like kangaroo. Uh, on the boot, the leather is under two millimeters thick, but it is fully lined with a soft glove leather. And so it feels thicker than that. Yet I can't stress enough how supple it is and requires no break in, uh, which I'll talk about later. Uh, the quarter panels are triple stitched to the vamp piece and the uh, two piece backstay is double stitched at the heel cup and single stitched up the central backstay. All the stitching looks fine and very clean and very straight. The top of the collar is rolled uh, and reinforced with more of the same leather uh, and down the lace facings too, although the edges there are cut leather and not rolled. Uh, at the back of the collar is a fabric RM Williams pull loop very securely sewn on. Uh, and as rare as it is for Aaron Williams, there is a logo at the top of the shaft, uh, but it's very subtle. The toe box is shaped with elastic, but I believe that the heel counter is actually uh, leatherboard. Inside the boot, the heel area is covered by a rough out patch. I don't know if you can see it. It has a semi-gusseted tongue, uh, which is gusseted up to the fourth eyelet, uh, so theoretically adding to water resistance. The hardware is antique brass, consists of four generously sized eyelets and three speed hooks, which all feel reasonably sturdy. Uh, going inside the boot, there is a removable leather topped EVA insole, which I'll try and pull out. And under that, I can see a leather insole. At least I can see the insole and nails going down into the midsole and heel. Now I can't find actual information about the insole. Uh, but from sight, I think it's leatherboard rather than uh, leather. Leatherboard is made from scrap pieces of leather, ground into little pieces, and then glued and pressed into board, like wood chip fiberboard in carpentry. Uh, it's definitely cheaper than leather, but in this quantity, it's not going to save the bank. It's used because of the price, but also because it's easier to work with on machinery, uh, absorbs moisture better and dries it out faster, and in some cases can settle under your feet just like leather. Uh, going further into the boot, it's put together using a 270 degree Goodyear welt construction. Now breaking that down, it means that a thin piece of leather called the welt is sewn around the three quarters uh, of the boot. The inside edge of the welt is sewn to the insole on the inside and connects that to the turned in uppers. Then on the outside edge of the welt, the welt is sewn through uh, the leather midsole. And yes, the midsole is full grain veg tan leather. Uh, in this way, the top of the boot is attached to the bottom of the boot with two stitches. Uh, one that's on the inside, you can't see, and one on the outside, uh, so that it is reasonably water resistant. Uh, that's because no stitch goes all the way through from outside to inside. And it makes the boot resolable because you can uh, just remove the glued on outsole in this case, and if you have to, you can cut the outside stitch and replace the midsole. Uh, there's a bit more to the story. As it's only a 270 degree welted, the back end of the boot is connected to the sole construction by being glued and then nailed. This makes for a more sleek appearance at the back because the heel uh, lines up with the back of the boot without a thick welt sticking out. In this case, as you can see, the welt is a storm welt, uh, meaning that when the leather is cut into a welt, they also carve a lip in the middle of it, which they push up against the uppers when they stitch it on, thus adding to water resistance. I've talked about the leather midsole, but I haven't yet talked about what's buried in there, uh, nor the outsole itself. Now, as far as I know, there is a thin layer of foam between the midsole and the leatherboard insole. Uh, this is for comfort and to fill in the cavity caused by the thick welt going around the outside. In that layer, between the heel and the ball of the foot, is a shank 
and this one is a fiberglass shank. As for the outsole, it's just glued to the midsole after the Goodyear stitch uh, has added the uh, midsole. Don't worry, today's glues are good and it's not going to fall apart in a hurry despite not being stitched all the way through. Uh, the outsole is Vibram, an Italian outsole manufacturer, and although RM Williams calls it a, a treaded EVA outsole, I think it's actually Vibram's Middlebury model. Uh, that's a one-piece outsole with a commando lug pattern, uh, but made with a soft compound and weighs like a light Vibram Christie wedge sole. Uh, they make up for a light boot, each one only weighing about 615 grams or about two-thirds of Doc Martens or Timberland boots. Looking at sizing, fit and comfort, like all RM uh, Williams boots, they are true to size. RM Williams uses the UK sizing convention or use numbers that are one number down from US. Uh, so for example, the US size 9 is a UK size number 8. In US boots, you're usually asked to take a half size down from your true size as measured on a branded device. So uh, where I measure a US 8.5, I normally wear US boots in an 8. Bearing in mind these are UK numbers, that means my true size is UK 7.5 and in these, I should take 7.5. Only RM Williams lasts are a little uncomfortable for me in true size. So in fact, I take this in a UK 8 which does not create more room in the toe box. And it is, I believe, the right heel to ball length for me in this last. And in their standard width is certainly comfortably snug at the ball. Talking to friends, we all seem to size a little differently in RM. So in my opinion, start with true to size. It's my feet that are the problem. Uh, the comfort factor is great. I mean, really great. The leather is super supple, requiring no break-in without sacrificing either support or protection. The uh, lightweight is a revelation. The removable insole and the softer compound commander sole is squishy and really comfortable to stand in all day, yet still providing stability as you walk around. I bought these in December 2023 as new old stock uh, out of eBay for 280 Australian dollars. Now, obviously, that was a steal for new RM Williams. When I last looked at them in a store, I found them selling in David Jones. That's an Australian department store. Uh, they were selling for just under 600 Australian dollars. If they bring them back, I think they'll match the current prices of RM's other boots at the mid 600s. Is that value? Well, I guess they are unique, right? Uh, they are mostly leather, although there is EVA and leatherboard neither of which I'm particularly bothered about, to be frank, but you may be a bit different. They are really well made and you can't go past their incredibly soft yearling leather. I think at mid 600s, they're probably on the okay side of value when you think of what uh, cheap cemented fashion junk actually sells for in competition to these. So in the end, would I buy them again? Uh, to support RM Williams, trying to manufacture here, Maybe. In terms of do I need them enough to buy them at that price? Probably not, <laughs> because of their uh, similarity to my other plain toe service boots, despite, I say again, that remarkable yearling leather. I cannot describe enough how soft and supple it is, and maybe uh, I'd like it for a pillow in bed. <laughs> anyway, that's my review. Uh, website down below if you want to trawl what other boots that they have, and maybe keep an eye on in if this pops back out. Uh, I hope you liked it, and of course, don't forget to click on like and subscribe, please. It, it really does help me out. So thank you for that, and take care. Keep safe, and see you again soon.